Hi and welcome. In this video, we're going to learn about the component parts of the Photoshop interface. OK, let's get started. Now, over here on the left hand side, we've got the toolbox or the toolbar, and it's where all the tools live. Now, to select a tool, we just move the mouse over it and we click on it. And it goes a little bit darker in colour, and this means it's been selected. Now we can click on any tool just to select it. Now if we hover over a tool, or many of them, if we hover over one we get what's called a rich tooltip now in the current version of Photoshop. And it's a little video that basically shows you the bones of how to use the tool and, and some of them are quite useful. And these are called rich tooltips. Now, if you notice, there at the bottom corner here, you can just see it, there's a little triangle. And that means that there are some nested tools. So if I click and hold down on that, then what I get is there's four tools that are nested underneath that tool. So if you come along one day and say, oh, I'm looking for the rectangular marquee tool, it's up, oh, hang about. No, it's not there. Then you can click and hold down and then go across and select the tool that you want. So let's say I want the rectangular marquee tools. Now you might have noticed that when I hover over one of the tools, I get this rich tooltip. And in there, it actually gives me a, a keyboard shortcut. So the rectangular marquee tool here has a keyboard shortcut of M. And if I hover over the move tool here, the move tool has a keyboard shortcut of V. So it just saves you a little bit. You're not going to remember them all, but there are some that are worth remembering. So if I'm, say, on the lasso tool, and I decide I want to select the move tool, rather than scroll, move my mouse, I can just press the V, and it'll select the tool for me automatically. And if I want to select the marquee tool, I just press M, and it selects automatically for me. Right, let's have a look up at the top of the interface now, where we've got the menu bar. And the menu bar, as you would imagine, has lots of different menus where we can access lots of different commands and controls. Now underneath the menu bar, we've got the tool options bar. And these are the options for all the different tools. Now every tool has a different set of options. So here we can see the Move tool, and you can see here are the options for the Move tool. But if I now click on the Marquee tool, then we've got a different set of options. And again, if I click on the Lasso tool, we've got a yet again another different set of options. Right, next is the Project area. And this is the area in the middle where you load all your projects up. And projects can be images, there can be documents, whatever. And, and here we can see we've got two different types of, um, of where the documents are, are displayed. Um, at the moment, if I click here, you'll see that's the image. And we've got this on a tab. This is Interface Items 2. And if I click on Interface Items, you can see we've got another image. So this is called the tabbed interface. We'll be doing more about this in a later video. But I just wanted to show you that you can actually move these around on the top. So now interface can become at the front by just clicking and dragging it. And interface items 2 becomes second. Um, we can actually drag these out. So if I click and drag on one of the tabs, I can now make this image free floating. This one's still in the tab. If you want, I can drag that out as well. And we can have both images free floating. Um, if that's the way you prefer to work, that's fine. There is no wrong answers here. Um, but I do prefer my tabbed interface. And so the way to put that back is I'll just click in the grey bar at the top of any image. And if I just offer it up, if I just move it up a little bit, you'll see it'll go a little bit transparent and you'll see a blue line appear. And that means it's ready to dock. And if I let that go, it docks into place. And then I can take this second image and I can take that up. And as soon as I see that blue line appear around everything, I let go and it redocks it for me into the tabbed interface. And then we've got the rulers. 
Here we've got two rulers, one at the top and one at the left hand side. Um, it's designed, there is a zero point, which you can see here, zero and zero. And then the rulers have whatever units you decide to give them. Now if I put my mouse into the ruler and right click, these are the options that I've got. So if I pick percent, you'll see it now goes from zero to 100%, which is the full size of my document. And of the depth, zero to 100% again. And so I can actually change that to inches and I can change it to centimeters. I suppose most often I'm going to be working in pixels because that, that gives me an idea that this is a thousand pixels by I don't know, 600 and nearly 700 pixels deep. Now, if you want to turn the rulers off for any reason or the rulers are not there, then there is a keyboard shortcut of control or command if you're on a Mac and R. So if I press Control and R, you see they will disappear. And come Control and R again will bring them back. Okay, over here on the right hand side we've got the panels. And by default there is a shed load of them. There's loads. We'll be going into more detail in this in a, in a future video, but all I want to do just now in this video is just show you what the panels are and how we can change them. Um, so if you look, we've got little modules in here. We've got little tabs, say so the properties panel, and this is the panel that's to do with all the properties of whatever we're looking at. We've got the adjustments panel. Yeah, underneath in another set of panels and these panels we can move up and down. We can make them bigger or smaller. Uh, and we've got these docked together. We've got layers, channels and paths. Now, if we want to reorganize these panels, we can do. And it's something that we would want to do. We can set them in what's called a workspace. Um, but for today, let's just say, I'll just show you, if we click on the, the word adjustments in the adjustments panel, we can change it round within the panel dock, or we can drag it out and make it a free floating panel. And we could take another panel, say the properties panel, and we'll drag that out. And then we can, if we want, we can dock panels together. So if I just offer this up from the bottom, just push it a little bit more, you get that little blue line appear. And then boom, and these two are now like magnetized together. So we can build up a custom workspace and we're going to be doing that um, in a future video. Now down at the bottom here, we've got two areas. Um, we've got the zoom and we've got some information. Now the zoom, we can basically type in here what zoom we like. So at the moment we're at one to one, we're at a hundred percent. If I type 15 there, then it will get smaller because we're zoomed out. If I put 150, it will zoom in to 150 percent. And then here we've got some information so I can click this little arrow here and these are all the things that we can have just showing here just as a bit of information. Um, document size is the one I normally have by default and that's just showing me that this document is 1.9 uh, megabytes and the reason there's two is that one's before you add any layers or effects to it and one is after. So here we've got 1.9 megabytes and 1.9 because we haven't done anything to this image. Uh, but you can put some other things if you want, say, your document dimensions. It's a thousand pixels by 667 at 72 ppi. So there are some information here that you might want to have set. I'll still stick with my document size. I do find that's the most beneficial to me. Right, well, let's have a quick recap. The interface is divided up into discrete areas called panels. The toolbox is a panel that contains all the tools that you can use. A menu bar gets you access to many tools and commands. A tool options bar, which contains specific options for each tool. 
a work area that contains our images, either tabbed or free floating, rulers for measurement and alignment, and panels that contain a specific collection of tools, commands and links that are set together for a specific purpose. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you found it useful. In the next lesson, we're going to look more in detail at the panels and how to work with them. I'll see you there. Bye for now.